how these vaccines work and its safety. Not everyone is given the vaccine. Half of them or some percentage of them is given the actual vaccine. The vaccine has technically not completed its phase 3 trials. So it is still in the phase 3 trial. Hi friends, welcome. So the entire country is talking about two coronavirus vaccines. One is Covishield, which is prepared by Serum Institute of India in Pune. And the other is Covaxin, which is produced indigenously by Bharat Biotech. So before we understand how these vaccines work and its safety, a little bit of history and also how clinical trials happen for manufacture of vaccines. So there are unconfirmed news and theories that vaccine was probably started way back in the second century BCE itself by Chinese, by probably by Indians, etc. But the first, so to speak, documented study of uh, vaccines is when the Chinese in the 15th century, smallpox, uh, which is now uh, an uh, eradicated disease, smallpox, which is caused by virus, uh, was, was a deadly disease during that time. And in the 15th century, the Chinese are believed to have taken the pus out of the smallpox uh, infected uh, people once they, are, uh, uh, they have recovered. They dried it into a powdered form and then they gave it as a powder to inhale through the nostrils. You know, and there was a rule that the boys will have to inhale through the right nostril and the girls through the left nostril, whatever be the reason for that. So this is during the 15th century in the Chinese. But the even more definite vaccine trial, so to speak, which was conducted was in the year 1796 in Britain, a British physician by name Edward Jenner. So he realized and he noticed that women, especially milkmaids who who uh, you know extracted milk from the cows there was something called as cowpox which came from the cows to the humans it was not so uh, virulent it was not so deadly but it did infect uh, humans but he also realized that the women who were infected with this cowpox always escaped being infected from smallpox which was an even more deadlier disease so in 1796 something which will definitely not be ethically and medically acceptable in present medical science, but he is believed to have extracted pus from a lady by name Sarah, a, a milk woman by name Sarah and scratched it on the skin of a eight year old boy called James Phipps, you know, and then he tried to infect this boy James with smallpox and the boy did not get infected. So this is the oldest known history of a, a very rudimentary form of vaccine which was developed. But then now we have clinical trials for development of vaccine. All vaccines go through three phases of trials and the shortest period of time probably in which a vaccine has ever been developed is not less than five years for various virus infections. But because of the extraordinary nature of the coronavirus, this has been reduced to as less as eight months. But now, what are these three phases of clinical trials? So the phase one is about safety, whether the vaccine is safe. The second phase is more about the safety and the appropriate dosage which can be given. And the third phase is actually to test the efficacy. Now, what happens in each of these three phases? In the first phase, there is a cohort study. Cohort study means a small group of people who are continued to be studied through various phases. A small group of people, all really robust, healthy individuals, typically 20 to 100 of them, not more than that, are administered the vaccine to check for its safety, first of all, whether it, whether it is creating any adverse side effects in the body or not. Now, after the phase one trial, is conducted and it is observed that there are no significant side effects and it is safe 
to administer the vaccine, the second phase happens. Now, what happens in the second phase? In the second phase, the volunteers who are administered the vaccine increases in number, maybe around 300 to 350 or 400 of them on an average. And what should be the dosage that should be given? You know, whether it is one dose is enough or a booster shot is essential, what should be the quantity that should be given? All these are tested in a slightly larger group in the phase two trials. And once the safety and the dosage parameters are determined based on the phase two trials, then they move to the phase three trials, which is also called as the efficacy trials. How effective is this vaccine in preventing the infection if a person is exposed to the infection? whether it is safe for different age groups, whether with people with different comorbidities. So this sample runs into thousands, maybe 3,000, 5,000. For example, the COVAXIN phase 3 trials has had 26,000 volunteers, which is still uh, undergoing phase 3 trials. So large group of people are picked and there is something called as placebo effect, which is tried. What does it mean? So, of the group of volunteers who have registered for phase 3 trials, not everyone is given the vaccine. Half of them or some percentage of them is given the actual vaccine, but the other half of the volunteers are given something very similar looking. So, it may just be water or just some uh, uh, mineral solution. Uh, you know, harmless mineral solution, which looks like the vaccine, which is called the placebo, which is injected into the other set of volunteers. And what do they do? They let them roam freely. So, for example, the third phase of trials, the coronavirus volunteers, uh, vaccine volunteers, uh, half of them would have been given the actual vaccine, another half would have been given the placebo, and they would have been let free. So, they get exposed to the virus in the natural environment when they are roaming around in their cities and in their towns and all that. And then after a period of time, they are checked. So, whether the people who actually got the vaccine are showing better immunity and do not contract the virus versus the people who actually had got the placebo in the first place. And then if it is proved that yes, the vaccine is more effective, people who had the placebo have actually got infected, but people who had the vaccine are not getting infected, then it is allowed for mass production and vaccination. So, the Covishield virus, so now these are the stages which happens. Now, world over, there are three types of vaccines, right? I will not get into too much of technicalities because the aim of these videos is to help you understand in simple terms. So, one is the Pfizer vaccine, which is an mRNA variant, which requires minus 70 degrees or so to store. So, we will not bother about that so much because in India, we have the Covishield and the Covaxin. Now, Covishield is based on a DNA variant. What does it do? There is something called as adenovirus and this is a virus which causes common cold, especially in chimpanzees. Now, this virus, but it will not replicate in your body, but this virus is injected in this vaccine into our body. It will not replicate itself, but it, this is the virus, the adenovirus through the vaccine. And what does it do? It will not infect you because this, the virus cannot replicate itself because it is uh, produced like that, but it will, it will initiate the immune response and antibodies will be produced to fight off this adenovirus and this antibody is also effective in fighting off the coronavirus in case a person is exposed to the coronavirus. That is the mechanism through which the Covishield vaccine works. Whereas Covaxin, which is an indigenously produced vaccine made in India by Bharat Biotech, it works on the principle they picked some coronavirus from the Pune Virology Institute, they killed it. So, it is an inactivated virus, but the protein remains. So, this inactivated virus is injected into the body through this covaxin and it again produces the immune response 
and antibodies are produced and it is also expected that it will be very effective against the coronavirus. Now, there was a lot of controversy because this covaxin has technically not completed its phase 3 trials. So, it is still in the phase 3 trial which means the efficacy, but the justification given by the Bharat Biotech is that we are safe and it is actually being done in the Indian setup, in the Indian environment. So, we will have the efficacy data based out of India as early as February and for emergency use after phase 2 trials, a vaccine can be approved by the government which is what has happened in this present case. So, now how safe is this vaccine? Is the vaccine required at all? There are leading epidemiologists who say that, you know, people who are already infected do not need a vaccine, they may not carry the antibodies after few months, but their T cell response, the T cell, it has a memory, our body. So, while we may not have antibodies after few months, even if we are infected and recovered, but if we are exposed to the coronavirus again, the T cell memory will produce the antibodies. So, there is no need for vaccination amongst infected people. There are another group of people who say that, you know, it is not required. But finally, I think we should go by the medical fraternity in our country. They are responsible people who have cleared these vaccines for use. I know of many of uh, my friends who are doctors, my relatives uh, who is a doctor. Uh, they have all taken this vaccine. There has not been any major side effect which has been reported about this uh, vaccine. But based on the order, right, the government is first going to give it to frontline workers, then old aged people and then based on the order, I am sure there will be much more data available. So, we do not have to panic and we do not have to deliberately avoid it. There need not be vaccine hesitancy deliberately from our part. But by the time it comes for the public at large, I think it will be even more safe and secure. And uh, till such time, we should always remember to maintain SMS, social distancing, mask and sanitization of the hand. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you again with another video next week. Thank you.